All right, everyone, we have made it to the very last chapter of King Arthur. I love this book, so I'm always a little bit sad when it's over. But this chapter is chapter 22. This is the death of Guinevere and of Sir Lancelot. The last battle had been fought, and all the ruling knights and lords of Britain had been killed. The king had vanished on his unknown destiny, and Britain had no ruler, no court, and no government. But what of the queen? She stayed in the Tower of London until the news came of the last battle. Then she put off her royal clothes and dressed in black. Remember that to dress in black was a sign of mourning, of deep and great sadness. And with five ladies took their horses early one morning and slipped out of London at the moment the gates were opened. Disguised as nuns, they fled across Britain to the west, to Amesbury and Wiltshire, where there was an abbey. The queen became a nun, put on the black and white habit, and led the strictest life in the convent. So the black and white habit is that black kind of uniform that a nun wears with a little white at the top, right? She showed such constancy and goodness, combined with the strength of her character and knowledge of how to rule, <clears throat> that in time she was made head of the convent. There she stayed until the end of her life. But there was one more incident awaiting her with the stormy world outside. Sorry about that, I need water. Sir Lancelot received the letter written by Sir Gawain on his deathbed, telling him of Mordred's treachery and asking him to come at once to help the king and rescue the queen. Do you guys remember that? So that was from two chapters ago when Sir Gawain wrote the letter, believe it, or no, it was last chapter, that he sent the letter to the um, to Sir Lancelot in France. Now you have to remember, France is quite a long ways from England, so it would have taken Sir Lancelot a very long time to get the letter and then to do something about it. He did not know about the last battle. So at this point, Sir Lancelot doesn't know that the battle has already happened. He and Sir Bors at once gathered the fighting force of their family from all over France and came with speed to Britain. They landed at Dover, where they were told the news of the last battle and the collapse of the kingdom. Sir Lancelot made his peace with the dead Gawain and knelt for long hours by his tomb. With that feud was healed or with that, the feud was healed, meaning he's made peace with him himself. And Sir Lancelot turned to his next duty. He summoned all his followers and told them that he was going to look for the queen. If he did not return in 15 days, they were to go home. He thanked them for their support. Sir Boris came to him after the council and urged him to take a few friends with him, as Britain was fast becoming a dangerous country again, with bandits on the roads. But Sir Lancelot was thinking of other things, and answered, Stay here, for I shall go alone on my journey. He knew where the queen would have hidden, and he rode straight there. He knocked at the gate, and though no man was allowed inside the nunnery, when the nuns at the gate saw Sir Lancelot, they backed away from the gate and left it open. In he walked and passed unchallenged through courtyard after courtyard, the nuns gasping at the sight of him and silently gliding away. He asked one where to find the queen, and she pointed without speaking. He came around a corner, saw her, and stood still. When Queen Guinevere saw him there, she fainted three times. Her nuns brought a seat, and Sir Lancelot stood still waiting. When the queen could speak, the nuns brought him to her. She said to them all and to him, Through this man and me has all this war happened, and the deaths of the noblest knights of the world, and through us is my most noble lord slain. Therefore, Sir Lancelot, I demand and beg of you for the sake of all the love that was between us, that you never see me face to face again. For God's sake, never come near me again. 
Go back to your kingdom and keep it well from war and harm. For well as I have loved you in the past, my heart can no longer bear the strain of seeing you. Now, my beloved, said Sir Lancelot, do you want me to go away to my country? That I will never do, for I shall never betray all the promises I have made to you. But the same life you have taken to, I will take to, and to pray especially for you. Ah, oh, Sir Lancelot, if you would do it and keep to it, said the queen. Madam, never yet did you know me to break my promise. In you I, sh I have had my earthly joy, and if I had found you so disposed, I had thought of taking you back to my own kingdom. But since I find you have chosen this life, I choose it too. So, madam, I pray you, kiss me once more and never more. No, I will never do that, said the queen. And so they parted. Sir Lancelot rode all day and all night until he heard a bell ringing in the forest. He followed it and found the chapel where Sir Bedivere lived with the hermit. And there he stayed and became a hermit with them. Meantime at, Do at Dover, his friends were growing anxious. Sir Lionel rode to London to look for him and was killed by bandits. So there's a typo there, guys. That's not supposed to say Dove. That should say Dover. So meantime at Dover, his friends were growing anxious. Sir Lionel rode to London to look for him and was killed by bandits on the road. Sir Bors decided to send the army home, and then he, with Sir Lancelot's brother, Sir Ector, set out in search. They were led by mysterious fate to the very hermitage where Sir Lancelot was, and there they stayed and lived a holy life with the others. Six years passed, and one night a vision came to Sir Lancelot in the night that he should go to the queen. In the morning he got ready. He and his friends walked to Amesbury, and when they arrived at the nunnery, they found that the queen had died half an hour before they came. With a hundred torches burning around the byre, they escorted the queen for the last time on the journey to Glastonbury. And if we look at byre, that means a movable frame on which a coffin or a corpse is placed, so a body is placed before burial or cremation or on which is carried to the grave. So that's what you see sometimes in the movies where they would place a body on this kind of platform looking thing and then they would raise it up. That's what it's talking about. After she was laid in the earth, Sir Lancelot did not live more than six weeks. Neither food nor drink interested him. And although the loving Sir Bors and all his friends tended him. He faded before their eyes. He scarcely slept at all and was generally found beside the queen's tomb, cheerful but not interested in living. Soon he was too weak to get up from bed, and he made Sir Bors promise to take him all the way north to the joyous guard and bury him there. One night Sir Ector woke suddenly and by impulse went to Sir Lancelot's cell. He found him dead and smiling. Ah, oh, Lancelot, he said, you were the head of all knights. You were never matched. You were the most courteous knight, the truest friend, the truest lover that ever loved a woman, the kindest man that ever came among a company of knights, the gentlest man that ever ate in hall among ladies, and the sternest knight to your enemies that ever struck with a sword. After the burial of Sir Lancelot, Sir Bedivere stayed in the hermitage for the rest of his life, but Sir Bors and Sir Ector went home to France, to their own lands. From there they went on crusades to the Holy Land, where in the end they were killed fighting against the Saracens. Okay, that's the end of the book. So we end it there. I want you to think about what it means to be loyal and that when you give an oath of loyalty to someone like Sir Lancelot did, think about what that meant to him and that once 
his queen, the one he had loved his, his entire life and devoted himself to. After she was dead, he felt there was nothing left worth living for because she was gone. So he felt that that his job on earth was, was done as well. So he literally was faithful to her and loyal to her all the way through to the end, which is kind of interesting because if you remember the women who loved him, right, that loved Sir Lancelot, right, both of the Elaines, they did the same thing. They died of broken hearts. Well, in the end, Sir Lancelot died of a broken heart as well because he was lost without his queen. But even though... The queen loved him too, but she would not be unfaithful. And the fact that she had become a nun forbade her from kissing him. So she even at the end, she would not kiss him. She loved him, but she would not kiss him goodbye. So this book has is, is got a lot of things about character that, and things that we need to learn about having good character Remember that every morning we recite our motto, right? Our character code. And in a way, that's kind of like our code of chivalry, if you will. So you are Spartans because our school, we are the home of the Spartans, right? So if you think about it, kind of our code of chivalry is our code as a Spartan, right? And you recite it every day. Honor, respect, service, excellence, perseverance. And part of being honorable is having all of those qualities. And it's important for you to think about in your life how you want to be remembered, right? Do you want to be remembered as someone like Sir Gawain or someone like Sir Bedivere or someone like Sir Lancelot or King Arthur, or ladies, would you like to be remembered like the queen or like one of the ladies, like Elaine? I mean, you need to think about for yourself what kind of person that you want to be, right? And you live up to your own code and you be loyalty or loyal and have loyalty to your friends and your loved ones in the way that King Arthur was loyal to his people and he believed in peace and honor and the Knights of the Round Table and everything that that round table symbolized, right? So there's a lot of things I want you to take away from this book. On your test on Monday, you are going to be asked to write about the theme in King Arthur that you enjoyed reading about, all right, that you found to be most profound in the book. So for me, my example would be loyalty. Because for me, when I read this book, I'm always blown away by the extent of Sir Lancelot's loyalty to the queen. I also love how King Arthur believes so deeply in, in living in a peaceful world because most of us desire to live in a world filled with peace and love for others and not anger and killing and war, right? So I, I enjoy those themes of this book and I try to take those pieces away. And another thing I want you to think about, so you're gonna have to pick a situation in the book. So if you wanna talk about loyalty, then talk about a situation with whomever it is in the book that you find to be extremely loyal. Um, so if it were me and I said Sir Lancelot, I might even talk about how, you know, even in the end, he sat by her grave and was fiercely loyal to the queen, even to her, his last dying breath, right? So you could talk about any kind of situation that you found in the book. Um, and then you have a part where I want you to tell me or to Mrs. Rankin, right, about why you feel it's important for us to read King Arthur. Why is it that Mrs. Rankin and I ask you to read King Arthur?
we don't just pick random books, right? We try to pick books that have a lot of depth to them, a lot of meaning that teach you guys morals and character traits that we want you to live up to, okay? So I want you to think about those because you're going to have those two things to write about for your test. So there's nothing that you really have to study for for your test. It's mainly just, did you understand the overall theme of the book? Now, there's, there's several themes, right? There's sacrifice, there's honor, there's loyalty, there's love. All of these things, friendship, is within this book. I'm not telling you to pick one particular one that I think. You don't have to pick loyalty. I want you to pick the one that, that you enjoyed. And then I want you to find a situation in the book as your example. Okay? And then you're going to talk about why you feel it's important for fourth graders to read this book, okay? I'm really proud of you for making it through this entire book with me. It's been a pleasure. I love reading to you, and I look forward to reading Treasure Island with you next.